Okay, all right, not yet. Anyway, y'all welcome Kara Kemp. And <laughs> accompanying Kara tonight is Tara Seister. You've seen her on the storytelling stage, occasionally reading a poem, and we hope she's gonna be reading more poems sometime, but not tonight, necessarily, no pressure. <laughs> Thank you. It's my eclectic career. I like to just bring all of the things and all of my toys right into the middle of the sandbox and just throw them together and see if they'll work. So uh, with the Bloom stage, because this is a little bit of a uh, sampling, if you will, uh, we bring poets and we bring storytellers together. And then we also bring musicians and visual artists. And I give them a theme and then just say, do it. Let's see if it works. I don't know. And it does every time. So uh, we're going to do just a, a piece is an homage to how we do it. Tara Seister is an oil gal at night and then a, a fabulous, I mean, oil gal at day and a fabulous musician to, um, at night. Sometimes on the weekends as well. Oh, yes. We forget about the weekends. So, uh, well, yeah. You know, truth be told, I was not actually raised in a traditional Christmas kind of household. And I used to feel very alone this time of year because of that. And the more I traveled and the older I got and the larger my world became, the more I realized that I was not really alone in that, that there were actually a lot of people who were kind of like me. Maybe didn't have the traditional kind of Christmas that, that we see on TV. Um, but one thing that we all seem to have in common this time of year is just the desire to be inside and with our loved ones. Um, you know, kind of following up on the story, we just heard one thing about the winter is you just never feel cozy in July. <laughs> about the winter, you know, you feel cozy, you just kind of want to bundle up and be warm and inside. Um, so this is actually just a p little piece of a song that my mother used to play to me when we were little um, around the fireplace, and it always makes my heart feel cozy. Um, it's a song that my generation probably doesn't know that well. Maybe some of the older ones will recognize it. It's called... Uh, Song for Winter's Night, it's by Gordon Lightfoot. Gordon Lightfoot fans. I'm gonna try to do it justice. in my early 20s, the first Sunday of every December was always on reserve for my grandmother's holiday open house. It was a feast of Sugarland delight. There were thumbprint cookies, haystacks, pecan tossies, little hand-painted mints in the shape of Santas and bells. There was Chex Mix and No Bakes and Orange Balls, and if any of them would keep, they were made months in advance. And they were stored in this upright freezer in my grandmother's kitchen with these little sweet notes on them. Do not eat these. <laughs> Dig a little deeper. Really, don't eat these. These are for the party. Kara, put the cookies down. <laughs> Little tiny confectionery soldiers were awaiting their post to bring holiday cheer and taunting me from that up fry's freezer for months. My grandmother would make this orange spice holiday tea. Some of you may call it Russian tea, but it's the kind where the main ingredient is tang. Yeah? <laughs> and sugar. And my grandmother would give all of her Sunday school ladies their serving times weeks in advance. My sisters were given the duty of restocking the cookies, which of course meant that they were in the kitchen gabbing with all their friends. My mom and my grandmother were on musical duty and I was posted up 
at the door register. Hmm. I dare not let one sweet old lady squeeze my cheek while pushing past that register unindexed. It was three hours nonstop of, well, yes, ma'am, so good to see you. Yes, I have grown. Please sign the register. Oh, yes, sir. Merry Christmas. Yes. No, not playing basketball yet. Please sign the register. Oh, yes, ma'am. Good to see you. Mm Mm-hmm. Tallest in my class. Please sign the register. All the while, just willing one plate of haystacks to make its way to me so I could have one before they were all gone. My grandmother's open house had turned out unintentionally that it was the place to see and be seen. Before Joyce Brothers had the VIP Murfreesboro section, she had my grandmother's open house. If someone was running for re-election, I guarantee you they showed up to sing a little ditty. We pushed all the furniture back to the walls and people would march right in in their Sunday finest and they'd sit down and put their knees together and then loosen their lips to gossip whispered over the passing of those haystack cookies. When you heard a little bless her heart escape from a corner, You knew that someone had been given the gift of gossip gold. While the more kinder people just reasserted their attention to the song being sung at hand, which was usually sung by my mom's high school trio 30 years later and accompanied on piano by my grandmother. They brought all the Andrews sisters and Bing Crosby and claymation classics to life. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening in the lane? Snow is glistening, a beautiful sight. We're happy tonight. No winter wonderland. That's right, you know it. In the meadow, we can build a snowman and pretend that he's Parson Brown. He'll say, Are you married? We'll say, No, man. Cause I don't want a fella bringing me down. <gasps> Oh, I could barely believe it as the words escaped my mouth. I mean, it was barely a whisper. But my mother jerked her hawk-like hearing and her hawky eyes at me. And across that room was like, I'm going to ground you for a month of Sundays if your grandmother heard you right now. I mean, at that time I was 15 and I was part Lynn Anderson feminist with this Beastie Boys flair just hidden underneath that bedazzled Christmas sweater. (laughs) And truth be known, my mom rarely gave me grief. Say, for instance, the day that I shaved the side of my head an hour before family portraits. (laughs) Or when I would pull my converse on with just a little too much attitude but I was just always so caught up in my head, you know? I was always trying to push the boundaries of expectations and stereotypes of a dumb blonde. And those Christmas tunes really had some major points of contention for me. First off, why if you think I wanna play with someone, I'm automatically gonna wanna build a snow man. Nuh-uh. Part two, why is the first question you always have to ask a young lady is, are you married? Right. I mean, I came by it honestly. I am from a tribe of women that are more boogie-woogie than classical, more casual and curious. We're loud laughers and the type of people that drink from the lightness of life while also paying gratitude to the dark. And it was always an understood obligation that I'm supposed to live out my curiosity and all of those personal rebellions just not on parade at my grandmother's open house. (laughs) Winter solstice is a time for us to honor that dark 
while also paying tribute to that overruling light sometimes, right? Solstice. It's smack dab in that middle of the holiday season. <laughs> Living it up tonight in hopes that I won't have anything to live down tomorrow. Solstice. Searching for the breaths to rest in the space between us. Bringing one soul closer to another. And looking for that space to just stop and gaze out and look up at the stillness of the stars. Or, or into the eyes of someone you've feasted across the table from for years but possibly never really seen. How will we feast over this holiday season? Will we just casually meet one another at the grazing table, never really fully committing to the meal? Or will we sit down at that trough and just bring it all in, never even looking up, making no bones about it, as we take a slice of that finest cold shoulder? Chew the fat a little and then wash it down with some humble pie. Or will we shout out a toast to mirth and merriment, feast with our eyes before our mouths and relish in the potluck of one another? My solstice returns to the nostalgia of my grandmother's holiday open house each year. It involuntarily, like breathing, I hear the first tune, and man, it's living in my bones and the continual jukebox in my head. It starts awakening the traits that I had tried to outrun all those years. I mean, isn't there something that you do this time of year that reminds you just a little bit more of your family? For me, I have this slight tap in my left foot and it moves to the same tapping rhythm that my grandmother's did when she rested in between songs at the piano. Or I will twirl a piece of my hair and automatically I am transported to the back of a 1978 Ford Country Squire station wagon and I can see the back of my mom's wavy, curly bob as she twirls that curl at the base of her neck. Solstice. Rebirth of the sun. A feast of standing in all of my dumb choices and just trusting I will make better ones next time. Raising my glass to toast all of my personal rebellions yet to come. And also paying homage to my family who made space for my uniqueness. So tonight, I would like for you all to raise your glasses with me. I even brought one up with me. It's not technically a glass, but. And I would like to shout out a toast to mirth and merriment to all of our uniqueness. How it brings us together. I hope that you shine up that uniqueness like a trophy and you put it in front of you with wonder and gratitude every day. So uh, this is a piece that's modified from one my mother taught me many, many years ago that's a little more suited to the occasion. Here's to the sun that shines and here's to the sun that won't but not to the sun that says it shines and later just says it won't. But the sun that I'll drink to from the break of day to the wee wee hours of the night is the sun that says it's never shown. But just for you, it might. 
Happy solstice, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you, Tara.